There are two general criteria for selecting a foundry. The first one is obviously technical. The second one, which a lot of people don't think about, are business related issues. The technical aspects are things like pixel size, imager size, quantum efficiency, angular response, star current, and all the other parameters that usually come to mind for an image sensor. The business related issues are also an important part of the image sensor design because when you start an image sensor design, you're entering a long relationship with the founder. You want to make sure it's a compatible relationship in terms of things like how long you want the process to be available, how long you want the production run to be, uh, the volume expectations of the foundry, whether they're compatible with your product. The foundries that support image sensor processes are a subset of all the foundries that are available. The whole fabless semiconductor business started with TSMC in the early 80s and it continues to be dominated by TSMC in terms of the total wafer volume. This chart shows a ranking of the fabless semiconductor foundries as a percentage of market share in 2050. You see that TSMC by far has the biggest market share, followed by Global Foundries, UMC, and Samsung. When you're developing an image sensor, you have to look at which foundries are specializing in the image sensor business, and that's a difference. The foundries we find most active in the image sensor space are TSMC, Power, UMC, and ST. TSMC probably offers the widest range of offerings in terms of processes. Their full offerings are 0.18 micron front side illuminated process, 0.11 micron in both front side and back side illuminated, 65 nanometer in back side illuminated and 300 millimeter wafers, and 45 nanometer in a stack configuration. Tower Jazz and their joint venture TPS Go offer 0.18 micron front side illuminated, 110 nanometer front side illuminated and 65 nanometer front side illuminated processes in 300 millimeter wafer size. ST offers 90 nanometer in both FSI and BSI and 65 nanometer also in FSI and BSI. UMC offers 0.18 micron and 0.13 micron in FSI and 55 nanometer in BSI. Besides the line width of the process, some other features that are really attractive for image sensors are stitching for large die, the availability of metal insulator metal capacitors for ADCs and sampling holes, and the availability of deep trench isolation for near-infrared performance. Stitching is something that's not generally available, but our customers have access to stitching at Tower and ST. The metal insulator metal capacitor is one of the modules that is very useful for the design of AAD converters and sampling holes. You find that mostly in 0.18 micron processes and rarely in 65 nanometer or 110 nanometer processes, regardless of the foundry. You usually have a harder time achieving the linearity spec in those processes. When it comes to dark current, the best process that we have access to is the TPS Go 65 nanometer process. So when dark current is of utmost importance, it tends to be our number of choice. When we talk about pixel sizes that are available in different process nodes, people tend to focus on the smallest pixel size that's available. In my experience, for every foundry process, there is an optimal pixel size that's neither too big nor too small. Generally, the issues with small pixel sizes are things like fill factor, sensitivity, read noise, full well, and angular response. When you look at larger pixel sizes, although they don't suffer the same issues, they have their own problems with lag and darker. People who do mixed signal design or ASICs are used to receiving very complete process development kits from the foundries. The same thing is mostly true for image sensor processes with the exception of the Pixel, which you really have to think of as a new device every time you do a design. Although the Pixel is made up of a collection of diodes and transistors, they're so tightly coupled that you really have to think of it as a single device. The Pixel development is very different from foundry to foundry. In some foundries, the pixel is developed by the foundry pixel design team itself. In other processes, Forza designs the pixel using process simulation tools. 
I'm very happy to say that all the foundries in the CMOS semi sensor space provide excellent customer support service. But one way of ensuring that you get the best possible customer service is to make sure that your business model is compatible with the foundries. The most important aspect of that matching is the wafer volume. Some foundries are okay with lower wafer volume numbers at higher NIs, while some foundries insist on a minimum wafer run rate. So you want to make sure both of these are compatible with your product when you enter a business relationship with the foundry. Another business criterion is selecting the right foundry node for your design. For example, you should expect a significantly lower mask and wafer price for a 0.18 micron process than a 65 nanometer process. At Forza, a big part of what we do is to help guide our customers in both the technical and business aspects of a foundry. 